Hello everyone and welcome to my blog. Today we're talking about food and how that has to be your foundation in terms of creating a strong immune system that will help you fight off the coronavirus and avoid the COVID-19 disease. I want to focus particularly on vegetables and fruits. I know that if you've heard me speak before or lecture or have read anything that I've written, I am a big fan of really focusing on our diet our nutritional um, foundation, if you will, which has to be strong, just like if you're building a house, your house is only as strong as that foundation is. Think of that in terms of our immune system. I am particularly a stickler for 10 to 12 servings of vegetables and fruits per day. Now, when I first say that, most of my patients think, oh my God, how am I going to be able to eat that in a day? Well, let me give you some tips. And then a little bit later on, I'm gonna take you through my garden and I will show you exactly how I eat that much in a day, because I actually eat more than that. So 10 to 12 servings. We, what exactly is a serving? A half a cup of a cooked vegetable is a serving, one cup raw is a serving. So for example, a half a cup of steamed asparagus is a serving. A cup of lettuce, lightly packed, is a serving. The way that I do it, is I divide it throughout the day. So I pretty much have about two to three servings of vegetables or fruit for breakfast, mostly vegetables. And for lunch, I will have usually about six to eight because I eat more than 12, and another six to eight for dinner. And the way that I do it is I use a lot of soups. So I will make a soup for lunch, for example, and a soup for dinner. And I cream, it's mostly creamed soups, so that the base is all vegetable. Now it could be cream of cauliflower, it could be cream of asparagus, it could be cream of fava beans, which was today's lunch, it could be the cream of garbanzo beans, it could be creamed kale, you name it. It's whatever is growing and ready to be picked in the garden. So in that sense, if you eat a bowl of soup, you may be already ingesting four to five servings when you're trying to get to my 10 to 12 per day. And you want to eat like the rainbow, as my good friend Deanna Minnick says, you want all the different colors. So the oranges of the world, the red, the green, especially green, you want all the different shades of green. And you want to eat vegetables, but you want to also make sure that you're including some of the herbs and the spices because those work with our DNA and they heart, they're high in antioxidants and they decrease inflammation, which in this pandemic of the coronavirus, we really want to focus on decreasing inflammation and building up our immune system. So if you think of eating soup twice a day, for example, you could already be getting your six servings. You may be getting three in each and you can even be getting up to eight. And then remember that with fruit, you want low glycemic load. So your berries and kiwi. And you were going to supplement, we're gonna use our supplements, particularly vitamin D, as I mentioned. You want your carotenoids and possibly consider vitamin A, especially if you know you're deficient, but especially zinc and your vitamin C, as, you, as I've mentioned before, and glutathione. And you can go to my website for my list of supplements and amounts. With glutathione, we want to be taken as a supplement, but we also want to eat glutathione-rich foods. And the first and foremost is asparagus. And the studies have shown that you can eat asparagus whether it is creamed in a soup and it's been cooked, whether it's been frozen or it's fresh and you're eating it semi-raw or al dente or even if it's roasted. It will still retain glutathione. There's actually a study from 1936 that is showing a patient that had an incurable cancer ended up living five years longer than they were told. And the only thing different that they did was they creamed asparagus and they had it every single day and asparagus has a high levels of glutathione. Now, other foods that contain glutathione are kiwi and um, avocado, for example. I especially like my um, avocado and cilantro salad. It's basically just those two things, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, and some lemon juice. Because what are you getting there? Well, you are, with a cilantro, you're actually getting rid of some heavy metals from your system, particularly mercury. And you are with the, the um, vitamin C that I've put in there, in other words, with the lemon juice and also the, the um, avocado, you are increasing glutathione and vitamin C, so you're helping the elimination of those heavy metals. And particularly, you're lessening 
um, the other effects on the kidney if there weren't any. Because it's one thing to recruit metals, it's another thing to really try and help your body eliminate them. So high glutathione foods, but of course you also want to supplement. You want to make sure that you're getting plenty of vitamin C so that you're eating some citrus every day, for example, if that's, your, that's one good source. But also you want to make sure that you're supplementing, and I usually recommend 1,000 milligrams twice a day of a good source of vitamin C. That seems to really help our uh, defense mechanism in terms of not getting infected with the coronavirus. And there's a lot that we can do with food. Food is our baseline. So remember it to be varied, colorful, fermented if at all possible. That's one thing I didn't mention today, but I usually have some type of a fermented food daily. You can, it can be a fermented cabbage, for example. Um, we, uh, you can also make a homemade yogurt. I make mostly nut milk yogurts, and I also make a coconut. Not a coconut milk, but a creamed coconut yogurt that you can uh, reconstitute in water. So ferment is a fermented food is also really important. It um, helps the robustness of our uh, gut microbiota. And, but remember that we also need fiber for the gut microbiota to be able to reproduce and also to uh, fill that mucin layer, that coating that it needs. And that is mostly from fiber, both soluble and insoluble fiber. Now I've been focusing more on uh, insoluble fibers we get in our vegetables. So let's go through some of the things you want to include. These are turnips, turnip greens. See how lovely and green, green they are, full of B vitamins, folic acid, vitamin C, antioxidants in general, you name it. And then we have some dill or fennel. Fennel seeds is what I put down. And there's a big controversy as to whether they are dill or it is fennel because here in the Azores, pretty much everything is called fennel. And then don't forget about kale. And there's many different varieties of kale. And you wanna make sure that when you're eating kale, you know where it came from because they may absorb some unhealthy nutrients from the soil as well. But in general, it's very rich in magnesium all of your B vitamins and it's such a rich source of fiber and remember it's a brassica family so it's going to help with estrogen metabolism and the elimination of toxins and then of course over here we have potatoes but they're not quite ready to pick yet and I want to show you my beautiful fava beans along with some more kale over here So fava beans we have to be careful with because people who are G6PD deficient may not be able to metabolize them and break them down. But if you know you can eat fava beans, this is what they actually look like as you pick them. And then of course you would open this up and eat the individual beans. Here's a better example inside. And the, the leaves are actually the hearts of them, like this heart of the actual plant is also very nutritious. I, I've picked some yesterday, so there's just a little remnants left now. So would you would open up a fava bean. Inside are the individual little beans. These are a little young and tender. You can grow them to be a little bit bigger and you can eat the whole thing, this whole thing, of course this is little, a little more bigger, but you can also take the outside little shell off and eat the inside, but this, this outside layer is full of fiber, so I tend to eat both of them. Another different type of kale over here, here we have the Allison family, of course, onions. And we also have some garlic over here, which is a little smaller. They're just starting to grow a little bit and expand. And here, one of my favorite things at this time, cilantro. So good to help you detoxify. But of course, you wanna make sure that you're also eating cilantro or that you're taking some high doses of vitamin C with it because cilantro is a great chelator. It needs the vitamin C to be eliminated. 
So make sure that you're including some citrus, but in addition, you may want to take more vitamin C, at least a thousand milligrams to 2000 milligrams a day, especially in this particular time when we're trying to fight off COVID-19 and enhance our immune systems. And guess what this is? Lemons, of course, in my lemon tree, which has lots and lots of lemons. And the amazing thing about this lemon tree is it has been given lemons year round. I love starting my day with a cup of warm water and the juice of a half a lemon, sometimes a third of a lemon if they're as big as some of these are, of course. But it's also a great way to have your vitamin C as well as alkalinize because when you drink that cup of warm water with half a juice with a, the juice of a lemon, you are actually alkalinizing your tissues in your body. What you want to include is your carotenoids. So these are carrots. Of course, they're baby carrots. And I have another batch where the carrots are much bigger and we're able to pull them and eat them. But don't forget about the carotenoids and how important vitamin A is in this pandemic. Now, the, it's important that you take both carotenoids and vitamin A. And vitamin A, you mostly get from your organ meats or from your cod liver oil. And of course, we have my rooster and our chickens that are keeping us company and saying hello, hello everyone. Hello from St. George. We're happy chickens. This is my lettuce patch. They're young, just starting to really grow. Yes, we hear you. The thing I wanted to focus on is this is kale. It's one type of kale. And um, we, when kale starts to sprout, you get these amazing sprouts, which are very, very, very nutritious. They help with detoxification. They also have lots of vitamins, and they are very, very tasty. So do not throw these away. If your kale starts to sprout this way, pick them. You can saute them. You can just lightly steam them, put some olive oil on top of them. So, so nutritious. And remember, it's a sprout. So there are so many different sources of vitamins, so many vitamins when you sprout things. Here's my other carrot patch, which of course we have some bigger carrots. The other ones were just baby ones that you saw earlier. Carrots, so juicy and nutritious. Right now, guess what this is? This is oregano. Smells so good when you just touch it and it is so nutritious. Remember, oregano can communicate with your DNA. It also binds the GLUT4 receptor and so it lowers your insulin resistance. There's just not enough good things I can say about oregano and spices in general. Here's another parsley. It's not my best bunch of parsley, but it is one. And thyme. This is the one of the varieties of thyme. I love just adding it to my salads. You can put it in your salad dressing. You can sprinkle it over your food, including your soups. This is something we use here quite a bit. We use it for, uh, especially for a tea. It's calamintha, but I especially um, love it on um, top of any steamed or stir-fried vegetables with a little bit of olive oil. I've even made a pesto from it. So there's calamintha. This is a much better example of parsley. Parsley is great. It's a tonic for the liver. You can add it to almost any food. I pretty much use it as a seasoning on all my food stuff. So I put it to soups. I add it to salads. You can put it on your stir-fry. And by the way, with stir-frying, I usually just stir-fry with water first. And then once, once the vegetables are al dente, I'll turn on the stove, add parsley, and also the olive oil. Here are my bigger onions. And of course, onions begin to, or belong to the Allison family. And I just add them to just about anything that I make. And just remember though, if you are on a low FODMAP diet, you have to be a little more careful with onions and garlic because they are on the higher end of the FODMAP foods. Or I should say the higher end of the FODMAP containing foods. Sage, it's a little dry, but you can see 
the long leaves. And sage can be great used in cooking. It can also be used in a tea. I love stuffing salmon with sage. You can also do it with rosemary. And I um, will be showing you my rosemary bush in just a few seconds. Here is rosemary. It's rich in antioxidants. It too binds the GLUT4 receptor, so it works on reversing insulin resistance. It's full of phenolic compounds that are very anti-inflammatory. Smells great and tastes great. What we can do to prepare our food, these are the kale sprouts that you saw me picking earlier. We're going to saute them. Now we're first just going to saute in water. And then we'll add our either extra virgin olive oil or organic coconut oil after. Now one other thing I wanted to mention. These are the sprouts, or I should say, not exactly sprouts, they're the green from our carrots. And that, they are also very nutritious, nutritious, and that can be added to our little stir fry, if you will. In addition, we'll be putting some garlic, and I use wild garlic uh, because I love it being also green and not just the white garlic. And then we're also gonna add some parsley that you saw me pick, and we'll be chopping them up and putting it in there. Garlic I mentioned. And because I love carrots, we're also throwing in some carrots there, and we'll be steaming them, and then adding the coconut oil, and we'll see you when we're sitting down to eat. When I lecture or teach, I am often asked, how is it that you can possibly eat 10 to 12 servings of vegetables per day and fruit? I'm going to show you. So here is a soup. This is about two servings of a soup. And you can count the whole entire liquid because it was a cream soup. So the base is made with fava, fava beans that I cooked and then creamed. And then I added turnips, which you saw earlier, um, they, that where they were growing. So you have here two, two and a half servings. Now, I am not a vegetarian, but I am mostly a plant-based person. So my diet is mostly plant-based. So you see here the vegetables that we were stir frying earlier. I stir fried with water and then added some extra virgin olive oil. That's about another two servings because a serving of a cooked vegetable is a half a cup and a serving of a raw is one cup. This is a fennel and arugula salad and there are about close to one and a half servings, two servings possibly. I'm going to have a total of probably about another uh, serving and a half. So a total of about three servings. And then we have a sweet potato, that's about a one serving, and of course, my eggs. So in addition, I also have some hummus and some beautiful carrots. So when you put all this together, just here, one meal, we have six, seven servings of vegetables. So it's not so difficult. And then I'm going to have most likely a tangerine or an orange or a chirimoya for dessert. Um, and that again is one more serving. So you're already up to eight servings per meal. And this is one meal. We still have breakfast and dinner. So when you really separate it out throughout the day, it is not so difficult to eat the 10 to 12 servings of vegetables and fruit. So just a little recap on what we've talked about today and what a foundation is to try and maintain our immune system healthy. Whether you're fighting off the coronavirus or any type of virus, and diseases in general. So we want to have a strong foundation. We talked about the 12 servings of vegetables and fruit and exactly how you can divide those throughout the day. I've tried to give an example of exactly how you go about doing it in terms of having your creamed uh, vegetables and that can be your the base for your soup and then you can add other vegetables. And if you eat meat or fish, you can add that as well or any other sources of protein if you'd like. So. My big focus is food. Food communicates with our genes. Our nutritional status begins with what we ingest, but also the thoughts that we think while we're ingesting them. So if we know that a certain food, for example, those 10 to 12 servings of vegetables and fruit, are going to communicate with your DNA in a positive way, in the sense that they're going to create um, more anti-inflammatory molecules, if you are conscious of that while you're eating, it increases its effect many fold. So we're gonna be conscious and we're going to use fruits and vegetables, eating like the rainbow, all the different colors as our foundation.
This is extremely important in today's day, but at any point in time. So I hope this has been useful. Make it a great day.